right, folks, Jake Mullen here, Try Jake Fitness, Try Jake Truth. And you know, on the Try Jake Truth, we talk an awful lot about health and fitness. And today, we're going to show you some health and fitness. This is a 20 minute chest and arm workout, something that you can do at your home gym or at your studio gym. Or if you want a little extra help, go to tryjake.com and figure out a way to book a session with me. But today, we're going to be using this very standard, basic, uh, traditional equipment. Uh, we're going to be doing flat bar benches as well as uh, flat bench chest flies. We're going to incorporate, I call them angel curls. Um, it's, a, it's a way to, to get better bicep growth and better bicep movement. We're also going to do some tricep work as well. And uh, we're going to show you how to do all that in, in the next in the next. 15, 20 minutes. So the first thing you do before you do any workout is you should warm up. Uh, you should warm up. You should kind of get the blood going, you know, whatever that case may be for you. But what's important here, which we are focused on the chest and the arms today, is we're going to warm up the chest and the arms. So I have here a, a very standard TheraBand. It's just a, it's just a large sized rubber band. And what you do with it is you put your palms forward, you hold it just like that between your, your thumb and your index finger and you just kind of set the shoulder blades back and you're just, gonna, you're just gonna squeeze the shoulder blades together. And you don't have to do a whole bunch of these, but the idea here is to get your shoulder blades and your back muscles you know, contracting so that when it comes time to, to drop the weight load on the bench press, your back muscles aren't freaked out and your chest muscles are loosened up and stretched out. Something else you can do is flip that band over, have a reverse grip on it, close it up, and go right up over the right up over the back of yourself. Don't go down below the shoulder blades. And what we're doing here again is we're squeezing the back together and we're opening the chest up. If you can see, you know, how exactly wide that chest is opening up. And we're also loosening up the shoulders, right? So that's all the work we need to do with that warm up so we can lose the band. And then what I always recommend that uh, people do before they get started is nice arm circles. Just about baseball size rotations, just about five, four, three, two, one, go in reverse. We'll go six, five, four, three, two, one. Now a big mistake that you see a lot of people at the gym do is they put way too much weight on the, on the bar. Um, you know, some people may think it's macho or it's ego or I can lift this and you can lift this and that's all fine. But for all intents and purposes, I have a, a 50 pound bar. I got two 10 pounders on there. So if my math serves me correctly, that's 70 pounds. And that's what we're going to work with today. And I'm going to do one set. Um, well, three sets total. The first set's going to be uh, 20 reps. Uh, the second uh, set is going to also be 20 reps. And then we're going to max out on reps on the third one. Uh, we are going to superset with this exercise using the flat bench and the dumbbells and we are going to do a chest, chest fly and that's going to complement each one of our steps and then we'll get into the arms. So first, the chest. Now I want to talk a little bit about bench press with you. <clears throat> a lot of times people hold the bar way out over their face or their neck and this is wrong. And I almost want to think that it's instinctual to keep the bar close to base in case something should go wrong. You want to feel like you can get it back there. But the example I have people do a lot of times is I'll make them cock their arm out to the side. And if you have your arm out to the side like this and you push, you are much more effective and much more powerful if you drop it down to a 45 degree angle, matching your hand directly across from the muscles that are our primary movers, the pectoral muscles. So it's important that we get into the right position and I'm going to show you how to do that. Your first move when you lay down is you want your eyes to be directly under the bar. Okay, so you want to you want to feel as though your eyes are directly under the bar and you don't want to be out here like this because you're going to be too close to the rack and you might actually wind up hurting yourself on a dismount. And you don't want to be too far this way as well because then you have to come an awful long way to bring that bar out over to that chest area. So it's recommended that you go <sighs> eyes underneath the bar. Find what's best for you. Now what's best for you is not best for everybody. What we're trying to do here is we want to create power. We want to be strong. So we want our wrist and our elbow to match so that this forearm area is perpendicular to the ground. Okay? We don't want to be too wide out here, not for this instance anyway, and we don't want to be too narrow in here because now you're taking a chest exercise and you're turning it into various arms exercise. Great exercises, just not what we're doing. So I have found that my pinky on this ring marker here 
is the best way for me to get into that position. So once we accomplish this, we're gonna push the bar up. We're gonna hold the bar, if you notice, I came right over my chest. I'm not back here with the bar. I'm right over here with my chest, and we are going to drop it down. And we're gonna start counting. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And notice something. I'm not doing the bounce off the chest, the big bounce off the chest. That's not how you do a bench press. You ease the bar down and you push it up forward. And this is our first set. And done. Excellent. So, usually when you want to do this, always when you want to do this, you should have a spotter behind you to keep you safe. But today, we're operating with lightweight, high reps, and I'm making an exception to that rule. So once we've done this, now we're going to superset. And a superset, is defined by an exercise that complements the muscles under which you just worked out. So we just did a bench press, primary movers being your chest muscles. And you know, it's amazing, I did that warm up. When you come down, a lot of people forget that you're contracting those back muscles. I feel great right now and I feel really energized and ready to continue with the workout. And you know, so many people, that's what they do. They will, they'll be working out and they'll say, I'm gonna, I'm really going to get after it. And they'll go and they'll load the bar up with, you know, 200 pounds. And, and the next thing they know, you know, they're, they're there for five minutes. And then they'll do one set and then they'll just kind of stand around and then they'll go home because they overwork themselves. So let's talk a little bit about the chest fly that's going to complement what we just did there. So I'm going to get out to the edge of the bench because uh, I want to get make sure I clear that bar back there behind me. I'm going to bring these two dumbbells, these are 15 pound dumbbells, and we're going to go for a, a rep set of 15 each. So I'm going to ease myself down. As I do that, notice I, I brought the dumbbells with me right to my chest. They're not up here, right? And they're not down here, and they're not down here. They're right next to the chest, right where they should be. And I'm going to press straight up over my chest, little micro bend in the elbow, okay? And you want to be careful with these. Don't overload the weight because the element of a fly is to really open the chest and create strength on a broad baseline. Good. So that's two, three. This is not a fast workout. Four. And you can really feel it opening your chest. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, let's do here, ten. We got five more. So my eyes are focused on one spot on the ceiling. I'm really planted on the bench. My feet are firm on the ground. I'm not moving around. This is a complete exercise for the chest. We got one more here. And then I'm going to bring these up and I'm going to stop. I'm going to bring them down and I'm going to use momentum and I'm going to sit up and get them right back to my thighs and then drop them down to the ground. Now, if you have an, a whole lot of weight and you don't think you can do the sit up thing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with letting the weights drop on the ground. Okay? So we're going to do two more sets of those. We're going to do 20 more on the bench press, 15 more of here, and it's going to look something like this. Eyes under the bar, hands in the right position, three, two, off, centered over the chest, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20. Good. Excellent. So we make sure that's secure. We sit up. We grab our weights. Catch our breath a little bit. If you happen to be winded, take a moment, maybe recover. Should be all right. I feel good. So I'm going to bring the weights back. Eyes fixated on one location. Feet planted firmly on the ground. And we're going to open the chest wide. One. Good. Here, this is two. Good. Three. Great exercise. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Notice the control I have. 10, if you're doing exercises and you're all over the place and you feel like you're losing control of the weight all the time, then you need to drop the weight, my friends. Because what we're trying to do at the end of the day is increase mobility, increase strength, and not hurt ourselves. You want quality movement, okay? Quality over quantity when it comes to this stuff. Excellent, good, so we drop those down. Wonderful. So we're going to skip the third set and I'm going to move right into the second exercise that we're going to do that has to do uh, with the chest, which is the push-up. The push-up is a fantastic exercise and it's rarely executed correctly. As a matter of fact, if you brought 10 people into a room and said, everybody drop and give me push-ups, there's a real good chance that you're going to get 10 different styles of push-ups. A push-up is a chest exercise very similar to a bench press. And when I say very similar to, I mean the way your hands are positioned, the way your feet are positioned, you're just going to invert into the prone position and do it from the ground up. I always liked the old joke that Chuck Norris doesn't do push-ups, Chuck Norris pushes the earth down. And uh, I like to think about that when I'm doing push-ups. So we're going to get down in this formation. I always try to keep my head up. I want to keep the scapular complex back here behind my shoulders and my neck engaged at all times. Now, a lot of times when you see people do push-ups incorrectly, one thing they do is they have their hands way out here in front of them. Another thing they do is they stick their butt up into the air. Another thing they do is they don't go down all the way, right? So we're gonna try and we're gonna, we're gonna try and we're gonna do a, a 10 really good push-ups. It's an excellent complement to what we just did here. So let's recap. Three sets, moderate weight, Moderate weight would be 70% of your one rep max. Don't ever accomplish a one rep max by yourself. For the flies, that's more of a feel exercise. As long as you feel as though you, 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 are, you got some good weight in your hands and it's not too heavy, you're in good shape. If you need help with this stuff, you gotta get a professional. So, we're gonna complement that with a push-up. Eyes up, hands underneath the chest, and we'll go 10 push-ups, right? Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wonderful. You can complement that in between each one of your sets at the end of the circuit that we just did. You can do three sets of ten at the end, or you can do one set of ten. The push-up is a functional exercise. The bench press is a functional exercise. These are exercises that involve multiple muscle groups at the same time to accomplish one goal, which is to lift weight, burn calories, and look great. I mean, that's what we're in business for in the first place. So we're going to revisit the bench now, only this time we're going to turn it up and we're going to get this incline going. And I'm going to teach you how to do angel curls. Be a good idea to get yourself some water right about now if you have some available. So I'm going to stick with the good old 15 pound dumbbells. I feel like that's a good way to do it. Now, just like a lot of common mistakes of uh, the bench press, curls have a lot of mistakes too. And one of the biggest ones that I see is the elbow starts to help with the curl. And there's a lot of different ways the elbow starts to help with the curl. And I'll tell you what I mean when I say that. I'm just going to stand up quickly. I'm sure you've seen these people at the gym. They're doing curls. First of all, they don't go down all the way. We'll come to that in a minute. But next, they're doing curls and their hands come all the way up to their shoulders. And what happens is those elbows start to go up. I'm telling you guys and gals this right now. The second that elbow lurches forward, you've just lost your bicep curl. You've turned it into a little anterior deltoid exercise. So it's important that you keep the workload where the work belongs. So we're doing bicep curls. So it's all about the bicep. So the reason why I like these, I call them angel curls because your arms are out to the side like this and it looks like you might have some angel wings. Call me corny and I like the way I call them. So incline curls would be what they're called in the book. So you grab your weights just as you had them before. You lean back, you put your head back 
and you go ahead and you drop the weight straight down. And as I said before, a lot of people don't go down all the way when they do their curls. So you want to fix a point that's right up on the ceiling and you want to squeeze the muscles, one. And then you want to stretch the muscles. See how I stretch them out? Good, two, we're gonna go for 15. All right, three, and notice that I am going all the way up. Your hands don't need to go any higher than your, than your shoulder line. Let's do 10 more here. One, two, stretch, contract, stretch, contract. Now we're curling, see, stretch, contract, stretch, contract, stretch, contract. Two more, Whew. one, down, stretch, squeeze the bicep. Good, right into an incline chest press. That's gonna be our next, that's gonna be our next exercise. And uh, the reason why I, I do it like that with this particular lifting cycle is because what we're trying to do is make things simple. So I, instead of fussing around with the bench, up and down and up and down, I figure, well, I'll do the incline chest press when I'm doing the incline curls. So let's do 15 more of these. And I just wanna talk a little bit about common mistakes here. A big one is people bring the weights right down inside here. And if you can see my body position, that's no good because my, uh, my hands are inside my elbows. I'm much more stronger when I get those hands out over my elbows. But if you don't have the strength to lift the weight, well, then you need to find out the weight that you should be lifting with. The other big mistake is people don't press the incline chest press in front like they're supposed to. If you can notice from the side angle, these weights are being pressed over my chest. They are not being pressed over my head as such. And I see a lot of people that do incline chest presses like this. That's more of a military press. Again, it's a fine exercise. It's just not what we're doing right now. Good, so let's do here three and two and one. Good, excellent. Drop the weights down by your side. And I'm just gonna drop this seat down quickly because the, the other exercise we are going to complement to our bicep work is a, uh, is a bench dip. Uh, so I'm just gonna do a dip right off of this bench here. And uh, this is a tricep exercise. I happen to think this is the best tricep exercise there is. I love a dip. And what I try to do is get my butt out away from the bench. My legs are nice and straight. I drop down until my arms are at 90 degrees and then I come back up and I make sure I blast all the way through. So we're gonna do 12, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Good. Those are difficult and they are definitely harder than they look. Ways that you can make dips more difficult is by placing an elevated object underneath your feet out there, or maybe even a stability ball is a good exercise. I'm gonna jump over here and grab this guy, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. This would be an example of an integrated, traditional progression. Clearly, the ground is nice and stable, but when I'm on a ball, I'm all over the place. So now we're getting into sort of functional movement. Now my core is, is going to be engaged. This is going to be much more difficult. So let's try to do 12 of these. So we're out over the ball, we're set, and we're going to go for 12. Ready? Drop it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, <laughs> 12 almost got me. But that's an example of the type of progression you're gonna be doing at Tri Jake Fitness. Whenever, just when you get to thinking that you're really good at something, I'll bang out a basu ball or a stability ball or have you do it on one foot because that's really what progression is all about. So let's revisit the angel curls quickly. And remember, 
What's almost as important as the curl itself, it's the stretch. So let those arms hang down low, squeeze one, stretch, squeeze two, stretch, squeeze three. This is how you get good muscle definition. Squeeze four. This is how you improve overall performance. Good, up, and you want you to squeeze hard when you get to the top. As soon as you get to the top, an extra little squeeze always works. Good, let's do eight. Here it comes, give me nine, stretch it out. Crash, good, stretch it out, up, bang. Drop it down, stretch it up, good. Three more, I got three more, don't you think? Good, and then after we do this, we're gonna go right into an inclined chest press, right? Here, rotate around, good form, pressing out over the chest, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. And you know what? Because I already did two sets of dips, one of which was on a stability ball. We're gonna call that a day. So that is, a, that is the tri-jake method, chest and arm exercise. You can do it at your home gym. You can do it at any gym, really. So stay tuned to uh, other exercises. You can go to trijake.com. They're all free, so uh, you know, be on the lookout for different foam rolling exercises, core classes that you can take. If you're an indoor cyclist, I have indoor cycling. It's all under the, the, live, the, the live workout tab. It's all right there. I gotta tell you, you know, I'm in pretty good shape, and, uh, and I'm really feeling that workout. I think if you commit yourself to that little circuit, you know, you're gonna be a lot better for it. And uh, at least when you're in the gym, you'll, know, you'll look like you know what you're doing. And uh, I guess that's half the battle. But all that being said, thank you everybody over at the Wellesley Media channel. Thank you Wellesley, Massachusetts. And thanks everybody for supporting Tri-Jake Fitness. And uh, remember to be healthy, stay active, and always move forward.